Good morning, Rebels, and welcome back to my life. Okay, so recently I learned that more than half of Americans have never traveled outside of the U.S., about 35% don't even own a passport, and more than half say they wouldn't travel to other countries for a vacation even if they could afford to do so. I've been to 11 countries in the world, including the U.S., and I don't think that I travel enough, and this news is just, like, ugh, utterly depressing to me. Okay, I could list all kinds of facts and figures about why people need to travel. Studies show that it increases empathy, improves your intelligence, assists with education, strengthens the body's health and immune systems. And statistically, people who travel around the world more are just more successful in life. But putting all of that aside, I'm going to make my case with a piece I wrote about travel a few months ago, and I will also put this up on my blog very shortly. You burn to understand life? Travel. You're mystified by the machinations of kings? Travel. You can't fathom the world's crazy? Travel. I'll tell you why you're confused. I'll tell you why you're in mystery. To you, the world is an abstract concept. You've never stood awestruck at the piercing majesty of the Himalayas. You've never hiked across the sweeping verdancy of New Zealand's South Island with nothing but your boots and clothes and backpack. You've never bunked with shattered refugees in Haiti or bartered for goods in France or broken your fingernails digging a well in Tanzania. How can you hope to understand people half a world away if you've never been to the country next door? I promise you, you won't enjoy every minute of your trip. The unsettling glower of a stranger is an itch you can't scratch. Lands with foreign tongues will frustrate you with indifference. Woods that have never known your footfall will leave you lost and searching for a way out. But that's life, and life is a lesson to be learned, not a menace to avoid. It'll tear at you, yes, and it'll strengthen you. It'll show you a depth of soul into which you never knew you could plunge. And the simple smiles of locals will warm you, a shroud of welcome you'll take home. The vistas of heretofore unseen mountains will call you to adventures you've never dared dream, reminders of your childhood's greatest designs. The road will tug at you like a lover rejected, and as with the lover, you'll return and wonder always, what if I'd stayed? And that's where you'll find your answers to this world. There is no shortcut to knowing more of the world. Tear holes in your jeans, not as a fashion statement, but as a memento of climbed cliffs. Scars will remind you of the time you left safety on your doorstep and had an adventure instead. Sweat cry, explore. These are not highfalutin love songs to the poet and the starving painter. Travel, businessman. Travel, accountant. Travel, factory worker. Travel not for the paltry good your dollars will do to the railway or the airline, but for the immeasurable good that an unknown world will do to you. Travel is hyacinth. Lose loaf to dole for it. How many wise men must say your money's better spent on sights and symphonies than houses and 50% off? Put it to the test, and not necessarily next year, for then you'll only be a little older, but no more ready than you are right now. And seek not the fastest conveyance, but the one that lets you see. Don't fly, drive. Better still, take a train so no attention be wasted on a steering wheel and a gas pedal. If you're among the truly adventurous, your feet will be enough. Because travel is useless without the ability to experience, to let a place pass through you like wind, leaving some atom of its presence within you always. Have you wondered at the greatness of ancestors who have left us or the generation that now clings to the end of their life? What great men and women, what giants used to rule this country? How could they see so far and know so well? And how could we fail so completely to follow their example? I'll tell you, the place of a young man or woman used to be not at home, but abroad. The parents of today's America saw more of Earth than we do now, and they did it in days when planes and automobiles were luxuries. Your parents' parents ventured forth from our shores as youthful as you are, spurred by the evil deeds of men they thought needed killing. And though that violence may have been needless, it cast our young unto the world to return with a clarity of thought and vision that was so very needful then and still is now. And though adventure is less costly than it has ever been, still fewer and fewer of us seize its reins and spur out upon its back. If ever you would complain about the degradation of our culture, would you not rather cease to be a part of it? Abandon your spats and heels for boots and galoshes, your security for the road. Forge paths where others fear to tread. Find yourself on misty shores you've only seen in sleep. And I'll greet you upon them and shake your hand and welcome you to the world. Thank you, Rebels. I know that was a bit unusual. I'm sorry I, I write differently than I talk, obviously. Please, please, go out there and see the world. Whether or not it's a good place, you're already in it, so you might as well learn what you're dealing with. On that note, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. 
I always forget to ask you nice people to subscribe, but if you like today's video, please do subscribe to the channel, which you can do by clicking below. Also, if you thought somebody else could use this message, feel free to share it on Facebook or Twitbook or whatever the kids are using these days. I write books which you can buy over there, and I sell merchandise based on those books which you can buy over there. I hope you check them out. I'll see you tomorrow.